We're now going to begin the evaluation of the anterior chest. And as we begin any new surface area of the body, we want to inspect the skin, evaluating it for any lesions that may be evident. We also want to inspect the configuration of the chest to see if there are any abnormalities that we will notice, such as the configuration of the sternum, whether it's out or pushed in, or if there are any other abnormalities related to rib structure. The first part of the examination of the chest is evaluation of the point of maximal impulse, the PMI, the cardiac apical impulse. And that is normally at the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line. And we palpate that to evaluate whether or not it is present. If it's not palpable in this position, you might have the person lean forward a little bit to see if it is evident. If it is laterally displaced, one has some information and some evidence that there may be actually left ventricular enlargement or hypertrophy, thickening of the wall of the heart. Um, we now are going to proceed in evaluation of the examination of the heart and lungs, and most of the examination of the lungs I do lying flat. It's not wrong to do it sitting up, but I'm going to demonstrate the way I do this examination, and that's usually with the patient lying flat. So we're first going to evaluate in the aortic area by palpation, and the aortic area is the second intercostal space to the right of the sternum, the pulmonic area, the second intercostal space to the left of the sternum, down along the sternal border to the left lower sternal border, the tricuspid area, and moving over to the cardiac apex, the mitral area, palpating to see if there are any vibrations which one might feel. These are known as cardiac thrills, and they're generally indicative of turbulent flow across the, those uh, valves. And the auscultation of the heart proceeds by evaluating the four cardiac areas just demonstrated. Warm the stethoscope, listen first in the aortic area, the pulmonic area, The third intercostal space, left of the sternal border, known as Herb's point. The tricuspid area, the left lower sternal border. And the mitral area, the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. One moves back with the diaphragm to the aortic area and the pulmonic area, known as the base, and as the person leans forward, one listens for the high-pitched diastolic murmur of aortic insufficiency. Sit back. You may have a stethoscope which has a convertible diaphragm. If that's the case, very hard pressure on the skin allows that diaphragm to be an actual diaphragm. Whereas, if you press lightly on the skin, that diaphragm functions as a bell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to lie down as we continue the examination. Are you comfortable or would you like to put your gown back on? No, I'm fine. Okay, good. Uh, if you lie back, I'm just going to pull the leg extender to make you a little more comfortable, and we'll proceed with the examination in this position. Comfortable? Mm -hmm. 